Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is a presentation of Kentucky Proud. This time on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs, authentic flavors from around the world that turn out to be rooted right here in Kentucky. As much local ingredients we, well, that we can. The fresh vegetables. We'll go into the kitchen at Vincenzo's in Louisville, where a pair of brothers from Palermo are doing Italian like no one else. Delicioso. <laughs> and Tim Laird takes a trip to the south of France without ever leaving the bluegrass. Escargot, French onion soup, we're doing all the favorites. And we're revealing the secrets so you can turn your kitchen into a European bistro. All of that and flowers turn into food in downtown Lexington right now on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Oh my gosh. We're excited to be with you again on Secrets for a culinary tour across the bluegrass. I'm Kevin Harnett. This time, we'll visit a destination in Lexington that's rich with local flavor and some pretty unique menu options. We'll get the secrets to stuffed squash blossoms at Distilled coming up. And in Louisville, I'll go into the kitchen at an iconic Italian restaurant, Vincenzo's, for the secrets to making ravioli from scratch. But we'll begin with some authentic French cooking with my broadcast partner, Tim Laird. Tim? You won't find a more authentic French experience than this. It's Brasserie Provence in the Forum Shopping Center on Louisville's Hurstburn Parkway. But it might as well be in the south of France. A very authentic experience. I've not been to France, but I feel like it. We authentic French uh, restaurant. Guy Genoux is the driving force behind Brasserie Provence. As you can tell, he's a true Frenchman. I grew up in France. I grew up, I was born in Cannes, grew up in Cannes, in the south of France. When he left Cannes for a visit to the United States, he met his wife and never looked back. That was 30 years ago. He's been in the restaurant business here ever since. But if someone would have told me that I would open a restaurant in Louisville, Kentucky, I would have said, you're crazy. Now Louisville goes crazy for the food at Guy's restaurant, and it's not the French cooking you might expect. People think French food because of what happened in the 80s. It was nouvelle cuisine, very expensive, very fine dining, uh, completely different. The food is fantastic. It's comfort food, it's French comfort food, it is, you know, casual. Phenomenal. We have a French, a French onion soup. Probably the best one I've had. We have our escargot, we have our steak frites. Prepared perfectly. Uh, we do, of course, charcuterie and cheese platters. We do a pork shop, a prime pork shop with a lavender honey glaze. It's a red ruby trot with um, an almond a capers white wine butter sauce. One of the most popular dishes at Brasserie Provence is something called scallops per salade. It's basically seared scallops atop imported French rice and a French style pesto called per salade. It goes great with the scallops and it's easy to make yourself in a blender when you learn the secrets from Chef Patrick Gosden. You're gonna add about four cloves of garlic, two bunches of parsley, turn on your uh, blender, get it pureeing up and then slowly add in about a half cup of oil. Perfect. And it'll all emulsify and come out to that. Beautiful. The scallops are easy too when you learn the secrets to searing them just right. Pan's nice and hot once around with the olive oil. You don't want too much oil in it. You can tell that's hot. I mean, I love that sizzle. When it hits the pan, that right. sizzle comes out. You're going to sear for about a minute and a half to two minutes each side. Leave it right there? Leave it right there. Let them go. Flip. You get yeah, a nice see brown, how beautiful that is. brown sear on each side. We're going to do a little bit of white wine. About a tablespoon of your persalad. And you're gonna add in one good pat of butter. It's just a little sauce on each. Keep going until your sauce is nice and nappe. It's almost there. The chef will serve the scallops on top of a special red rice that's imported from the south of France. Yeah, the rice. The rice goes in? The rice goes in. He tosses it with sauteed onions, then adds fresh tomato. Just a rough dice, rough chop. Fresh water. Very good. A cup of rice, you're doing about a cup and a half cup and three quarters of water. Now here's a good secret for adding herb flavor to your rice. It's just bay leaf and some fresh thyme. And what you're gonna do is just... A little cheesecloth? A little cheesecloth, butcher's twine, give it a little wrap. You can fish out all these herbs 
because it's already in the cheesecloth. It's already but you get in. all the flavors of uh, exactly. all those herbs together. And there she is. You're going to add your bouquet or sachet, however you want to call it. Give it a good a little stir. You're going to turn it to a very low, low and slow. Put a lid on it. Forget about it for about 20 to 30 minutes. Look at that. And it has all the flavors in there with that bouquet sachet or yep. bouquet garnet. Bouquet garnet, <laughs> garnet sachet. He puts the rice on a plate with Provencal tomato, which is topped with more persalade and roasted with breadcrumbs. And then a little scallop on each. Beautiful. Oh. The rest of the buttery sauce goes all over the top, making for a French masterpiece right here in oh. Kentucky. That's the dish. I love scallops, and those are really well done. Those are delicious. Fabulous. Like nothing we've ever had before. And it doesn't stop there. Up next, secrets revealed to all the French classics, easy to make escargot, and the best French onion soup I've ever had. It is the top of all French onion soups I've ever tasted. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is a presentation of Kentucky Proud. With support from the Kentucky Beef Council. In Kentucky, beef is still what's for dinner. PNC Bank for the achiever in you. The cooking continues on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I'm Tim Laird in Louisville, but I feel like I've gone to the south of France because I'm at Brasserie Provence, an authentic southern French restaurant. It's very French, but also very approachable. It's down-to-earth comfort food with service that makes you feel like family. Very hospitable, made us feel very welcome. It's really wonderful. It's a real French brasserie, from the food to the cocktails. Great cocktails. They even serve imported French beer. It's just so authentic. I'm back in the kitchen with Chef Patrick here, and this truly is authentic Southern French cooking. I mean, when you think of France, you got to think of escargot. Always, always pops in the mind. Or snails, right? Or snails. Right? And is this a popular dish here? Very popular. And you're going to show us the secrets to how we do it here at Brasserie Provence. Yes, and uh, you can do it at home as well. This recipe starts with two sticks of butter. Four tablespoons of chopped garlic, a half a bunch of chopped parsley, and about a half a cup chopped walnuts. Give it a little crunch factor. A little crunch too. factor, Excellent. correct. And All then right. a little bit of love, some pernod. Just keep squishing and mushing until you get a nice compound butter going. You can make this ahead of time, keep it in your freezer, and then when you're ready to use, just, uh, just slice it off. And slice it off and be ready to go. Perfect. Now it's time to cook the snails, which are imported from France. The chef does that in a pan loaded with butter, garlic, and shallots. The aromatics going with the shallots and the garlic out of the butter and then you're gonna pop your snails in there once they're drained off. And while that's all going on and it's sauteing and just smelling delicious, you're gonna hit a little tarragon. And finally, another shot of that Pernod French liqueur. So you're going about two minutes, flame it, burn your alcohol Beautiful. off. Beautiful. God, it smells so wonderful. And now, it's ready for the plate, or even better, an escargot tray. What a great idea. If you're making these at home, you want the official tray. You can find these at the Dine Company, so there you uh, go. what a great idea. And finally, a good glob of our compound butter goes on top of each snail, melting with goodness. In the oven, 350 for about five minutes. Bubbly, delicious. Yep. First time escargot taster. Uh, didn't know what to think, but it's delicious. It was really good. The butter clearly puts it over the over the top. Totally great. Escargot is French to the core, but no dish is more traditional in a brasserie than French onion soup. And this one is the best I've ever had. And I'm not the only one saying that. The onion soup was the best I've had on another level in terms of deliciousness. And it's actually easy to make when you learn the secrets. Get all your onions julienned up, you got your pot, nice and hot and all you're doing is caramelizing your onions and I know you got to be patient on this because a lot of times I've tried to cook them too fast and then they burn you got to start over this takes about 30 to 45 minutes okay you'll start seeing when it's caramelizing it'll start browning on you and then at that point in stage you start adding a little bit of water this is what you're looking for when it's all said and done nice brown beautiful caramel color caramelized onions. You are going to add thyme and beef base. 
You're going to deglaze it with about a cup of sherry. A little cooking sherry goes in. All right, sherry gives you the nuttiness, the nutty flavor. And then in goes about a half gallon of water. Bring it up to a boil, and then you turn it to a simmer, and you let it go for another 45 minutes at a simmer. Wow, so that way all those concentration of flavors will work its way into the water? Yep. Beautiful. And that's your soup when it's all said and done. But it wouldn't be complete without my favorite part, the crouton on top and a load of extra gooey cheese. Slice of cheese, Gruyere, and a little bit of mozzarella. To and shave, top with mozz. Shaved mozz. Wow. Put that under your broiler for a few minutes until it's all melted and ready to eat. Wow. <laughs> there it is. And there it is. That many bowls of French onion soup before, but uh, probably the best one I've had. Talk about that gooey, wonderful flavor. Mm, very French. Incredible. Phenomenal. I've traveled over uh, to France quite a bit, right. and your soup beats theirs any day. I'm oh, telling you, thank much you. better than <laughs> they do in France. I, I will attest to that. <laughs> well, if that doesn't make you hungry, you got my mouth watering. Thanks, Tim. We'll check back in with you coming up. Plus, I'll go into the kitchen for authentic Italian cooking with a chef who's been doing it for 50 years. His secrets revealed still ahead on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is a presentation of Kentucky Proud with support from the Kentucky Beef Council. In Kentucky, beef is still what's for dinner. PNC Bank, for the achiever in you. Nicely done, beef. You might be the only meat with a knife named after you. A protein like no other. Beef, it's what's for dinner. Hi everybody, I'm Kevin Harnett and welcome back to the show that takes you out to eat into the kitchens where the secrets are revealed from Kentucky's Best Chefs. Right now we have a backstage pass to what's perhaps the most iconic Italian restaurant in the state. A restaurant that's hosted a long list of celebrities from Frank Sinatra to Hillary Clinton. It's Vincenzo's in downtown Louisville, run by brothers Vincenzo and Agostino Gabriele a pair who's helped shape the city's culinary scene for more than four decades. And they still do Italian just like their mom did. My mom was uh, a wonderful, wonderful cook. She never had anything in the refrigerator. She would go to market every day. Every morning, she would go to market and try to find the freshest ingredients available. Fresh is the only kind of cooking Augustino has ever known. And any time you use the fresh ingredients and the best ingredients, you only can come out with the great food. We use a fresh lobster right here. You know, I took off the shell like this. He cuts up the lobster. So this is the lobster. Along with some shiitake mushrooms. Just like this. And some morels. He'll add all of that to a hot saute pan with olive oil, shallots, and garlic. Another secret to this is fresh herbs. Agostino chops up some dill and adds that to the pan too, along with some dry sherry. We're gonna deglaze with the sherry. Go with this. This is a mascarpone cheese. We're gonna put a little Romano for the flavor. Okay, this is, yeah, once we reach this point, it's ready. Okay, here, you try to place the stuffing right in the middle of the dough. He folds half the dough over the top and then tamps it down to remove any air in between. He then cuts out the rounds and seals each one using a fork. The filling is not gonna come out. He makes a cream sauce for the ravioli that's oh, like a celebration. It's shallots and butter that are sauteed and then deglazed with champagne. Add to that some heavy cream, a little more fresh dill, crushed red pepper, and it's ready to go. Yeah, we boil the pasta, you know, the ravioli, uh, say about five minutes because it's a fresh pasta. The cooked ravioli goes right into the sauce to get coated. It tastes very good. We're gonna garnish with uh, fresh zucchini, 
saute fresh zucchini and some uh, grape tomato to give a little color to the dish. A little red sauce on the side, and there you have it, another masterpiece from Chef Agostino Gabriele, lobster ravioli that you can make at home now that you know the secrets. Or come on down to Vincenzo's and let Agostino make it for you. It's wonderful. Everyone should come here and try this. It's Thank great. You. It was wonderful, and I'll definitely come back for more. We're coming back for more, too. Up next, Tim Laird takes us to Lexington for fine dining, Kentucky style, at Distilled. Stay with us for more Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is a presentation of Kentucky Proud. Nicely done, beef. You might be the only meat with a knife named after you. A protein like no other. Beef, it's what's for dinner. Our culinary tour of the bluegrass continues on Secrets. Next stop, Lexington, at a restaurant that takes fine dining, Kentucky style, to a whole new level. Tim Laird is at Distill. There's no better place to taste Kentucky's finest, whether it be food or cocktails. Lots of bourbon. We have about uh, 70 different types of bourbon here. The food is fantastic, and there's something for everyone. Everything on the menu is, is, is really, really good. We're really proud of everything on there. You'll find the old classics. Our uh, filet at dinner time, people love. There's creative contemporary cuisine, too. A squash blossom stuffed with goat cheese is awesome. There's nothing quite like eating a flower stuffed with cheese. And when squash blossoms are in season, you can do this yourself when you learn the secrets. So first, uh, we're gonna just cut this off. This just basically makes it a little bit easier to open up the, uh, the petals and get inside. You can tell how fresh that is. I mean, that is fresh. Oh, yeah. There's no wilting, yeah. no brown. This well, is... these actually have to be really fresh because they, they wilt so quick. Um, generally, like the lifespan is a couple days, and they're pretty much wow. shot. Uh, we have some goat cheese here that I took out about an hour ago to kind of warm up so it's pliable so that we can pipe it inside the squash blossom. And I like the secret of pulling out the goat cheese because otherwise it's hard to work with. Oh, yeah, you would never be able to pipe it in here if it wasn't. It's like c cement almost if you, oh, don't, yeah. if yes, you don't let it warm it up. It would a never bit. work. Okay. Next, we're going to make it some pour batter. Um, it's basically equal parts flour and rice flour with some really, really cold uh, soda water. And again, secret is it has to be cold. It has want to be cold. Light, right? Right. Yeah, you want like a perfect medium. Not okay. too heavy, not too light. And you said so. this is rice flour and regular flour. Or and, and salt. And salt. Yeah. Perfect. And that's what I love about a tempura batter, too, because it's very light and yet crispy and it's just wonderful. Exactly. When this is the consistency that you want to have right Perfect. here. Perfect. Some pure batters made, now what? Okay, so we've got the uh, squash blossoms that have been slightly chilled. Okay. Remember we warmed it up to begin with to pipe it, right. but then we want to put it back in the fridge to make it cold because when you're going into a fryer, if it's not really cold, it'll just kind of ballpark. Nice secret to know when you're doing this. The chilled and stuffed blossoms get rolled in the batter and then dropped into the fryer. Yeah, and a nice little shake so it won't stick. About 350 degrees, and generally, uh, I don't do much with times and measurements. Uh, just when I think it looks good is uh, when we pull it out, but I'm gonna guesstimate probably about 45 seconds. So again, this is a uh, experienced chef uh, knowing the visual. We're not gonna do it's a It's all timer. about the visual. It's all about the me. color yeah, you're looking yeah. for, that golden. Uh... And that's something that you learn over time. <laughs> just doing it so much, maybe, you know. But again, it's one of those seasonal dishes that you have when it's fresh, you've got it here. All right, absolutely. It should be about ready here. We're just going to pull them out. Just a little bit of salt. It's another good idea because uh, that way it'll adhere to it when it's fresh out of the fryer. Exactly. The fried squash blossom is unique all to its own. But wait until you see what goes with it. We have some peach mustarda. Um, this is basically just some fresh Georgia peaches. Uh, we added some uh, mustard seed. Uh, sugar and champagne vinegar. Wow, that's an interesting uh, side. I've never seen that. Yeah, yeah. Chef Mark floats one of the squash blossoms on top, then goes for more goodness. We have some fresh guanciale that we make in house. Guanciale is basically a pork cheek. Wow. It has been cured. 
gorgeous dish, Chef. I mean, I'm telling you, this looks so good. A lot of textures going on in there, too. And I oh, yeah. Just, what's the best way for me well, to go in? Well, uh, there's three components here. So you've got the salty from the guanciale. Mm -hmm. you got the sweetness from the peach. And you've got the goat cheese. So I like to, you know, three components. I like to get a little taste of each. I, I want everything going in. Oh, this looks so fabulous. Oh, man. Not only do you have all those flavors going on, as you described, but then the creaminess of that goat cheese just kind of just finishes everything off in that creamy texture and just beautiful and all those flavors go together so well that is awesome when these are in season this oh, is yeah. the thing to have absolutely that is great thank you chef for sharing a lot of great thank secrets. you so much appreciate it these are killer great stuff at distilled in downtown lexington thanks to tim for taking us there and to mark wombles for letting us go behind the scenes for more secrets, you can find us on Facebook. Just search for Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs, or if you're on Twitter and Instagram, at Secrets TV. I'm Kevin Harnett for Tim Laird. For all of us at BMB Productions, we'll see you next time with another great edition of Secrets.